I'm glad I gave everybody the handout because I'm missing my first slide. I'm missing my first slide. Um, first don't, you never know how that happens when you're pushing and trying to run a dental practice and prepare slides and print things out and everybody in the office, this stuff happens. The first slide that's missing just simply says, what's the definition of biocompatibility? We've thrown this around a lot in the, in the meetings, the various meetings, and discussed the definition of biocompatibility is that which meshes or blends with the body, be metabolized by the body, becomes the body without causing a problem. Okay? So that's, we've always kind of thought that was our definition. We call ourselves biocompatible dentists uh, because the dentistry that we do not create a problem to the body. When it comes to dental materials, you want a material that A, is going to maintain its integrity a reasonable amount of time. It's important right there. Because we have this paradigm in the United States that in the world, when a dentist does a fling or does a crown or does anything for you, it's supposed to last forever. That paradigm has to change because a lot of the dental materials that we put in the mouths not last forever. It's a totally different way of looking at things, okay? Our, our new paradigm is that we want the patient to last forever. And I remember when I was in dental school, I was told that if the, the, a, de, a good dentist was one that did a filling that lasted a long, long time. That's the definition of a good dentist. That's not necessarily true now. Not, you know, not that we're, we're not giving ourselves a license for dentistry. What we're saying is more important is the life of the patient, not the life of the dentistry, okay? And of course, we want it to function and give the appearance of normal teeth. What most important is that's going to cause the least amount of changes to the immune system. Substitute your T cells, your B cells, but long-term changes as well. Okay, so... No, I'm preaching to the choir here, but uh, we have to give a little bit of microbiology, a little bit of immune view for those who are not in the choir or who have been out of the choir for a long time. Okay, so the immune system. The primary function of the immune system is to recognize self and non-self. It's just so, so important. As dentists, we always lose sight of that. I forget about so, getting the best impression, getting the best margins, having the material last a long time. What does the immune system say about it, okay? How is that accomplished? Through the histocompatibility complex on every single cell. Every cell in your body has your initials on it, your name. Exactly the way you spell it. Is anything added to it? is no longer your histocompatibility complex, is recognized by the body as self. Okay. There are different degrees of reaction when, when the body identifies something as non-self. I know there's somebody out there who teaches something is either suitable or not suitable. That's true. There are different re degrees of reaction. And um, there's a big, big difference between me. It's the jewelry that I bought yesterday. I, I bought some <laughs> silver. I bought some silver in Mexico. When I took it off last night, I had some hives over here. Okay, not silver, obviously, right? So, yep, yeah. yes, nickel. Yeah, <laughs> that wasn't the PC board. Yeah, he, so he wins because he told me not to buy it. <laughs> So, so not silver, and so that's what I would call a mild reaction or a moderate reaction. The body was letting me know, eh, 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 not self. So, did I, did I go into anaphylactic shock in my room? No. Severe reaction. If you ever hear somebody say it can be either suitable or not suitable to your two parameters, no, 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 no. The big difference between a little bit of hive, a bit of itchy, a black itchy. Okay? Um, in, in the old circles, in the old paradigm, 
learned about toxicity with respect to uh, levels of toxicity, lethal dose, remember all that stuff, LD50, LD100, length of exposure, sensitivity to the individual, it's all out, okay? The self or non-self. That's really how simple it is. The lymphocytes are trained to recognize self or non-self. So where do these guys come from? They start out in utero from the liver, the liver of the baby, okay? In the thymus bone, we get our T cells, okay? bone marrow, utero. So, so important when we're talking about implants, because implants are in the body, not a teeth. We're not talking about cosmetics here. Talking about drilling something into the bone marrow of the body, past ectodermal layer, or into mesodermal space. Very, very important. Okay? The protein in the body that does not display the specific protein patterns cannot be metabolized. It's important because there's a piece of meat. That's not me. My body can break it down. Make it into me, okay? Okay. If it's not, if it's not me, my body can't break it down and make it into me. It's recognized as an antigen. Seem to be attacked, lesser or a greater extent. A specific kind of antigen. It's immunogen, which means it causes an immunogenic reaction. The haptin. These are not proteins. The substances that bind to the outside of the cell. Antibodies and bind both. You've got cell, who's the haptin, boom, hooks up to it. Now we've got antibody that says, wait a minute, it's no longer B L A N C H E. Now B L A N C H E or A little bit different. So all the cells over here that were B L A and C H E C are then telling my body, let's send down some antibodies. Send down some antibodies, let's get rid of this stuff. Okay? Right. Antibodies then bind to both. Now this complex of the three of them is what sets up an immune reaction in the body. Again, here's the formula. Human cell Mercury, or in last night's case, it was silver, it's an antigen. Antigen, antibodies, haptin. Most common haptins, your drugs. Can we avoid drugs? Avoid taking drugs in our life? Why? Right, because drugs are not filtered through your water filtration system. When you take a glass of water from the tap, you're getting somebody's Viagra from last night. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You're, yeah. you're getting the antidepressants, antihypertensives. You're getting all of it in that tap water. Besides the fluoride and everything else that's in there, it's not filtered out of our water system. As a society, we are being drugged every single day. I close from poisonous plants that we've always known. And again, the majority of them are heavy metals. In the human body, the most common one that creates a haptin that creates traffic in the body is mercury, right? Haptins are very large molecules. Because they're very large molecules, they tend to clog up parts of the body are full of capillaries, okay? Anything that's a primary filter organ is loaded with capillaries. Okay, so what are those? Kidneys, glomerular filtration, intestines, brain, heart. These are your primary filter organs. When you have a happen floating around in the bloodstream now, then is your... Your cell body is mercury attached to it or aluminum attached to it, right? It's an antibody 
slobbed over it, this now will clog up your kidneys. This now will clog up your brain. This now will cause a heart attack. So people say, well, Blanche, you know, you're always making such a big deal about ceramics and the amount of aluminum that's in ceramics. Every little aluminum. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's not like what we used to hear here about mercury. Oh, a little bit of mercury comes off the filling. Well, you know what? That little bit hooks up your kidneys with your heart and causes a heart attack. Nobody ever makes the connection. In the fact, here's a perfect example. Example, Paula Dean. I love Paula Dean. You know who Paula Dean is? She's a woman from Savannah, Georgia. Who's, um, you know, her husband passed away. They got a divorce, and so she was stuck raising her two boys by herself. So she, because she had no money, she could make them their lunch in a little brown bag. And, and of course, boys being boys, would trade their lunch. And other people began to notice, you know, hey, this, this is not bad. This is good stuff. Then before you know it, she was making lunch for other kids in the neighborhood. And then before you know it, making lunch for other people in the neighborhood. And this is how her business grew. She wound up opening the restaurant, and now she's the cooking guru that she is. It's fantastic. John and I ate in Paula Dean's restaurant in Savannah, Georgia. We loved it. Oh, my God. Now the hoopla is that Paula Dean has diabetes. If you take a look at the picture of Paula Dean today, look at Paula Dean 10 years ago. Paula Dean had her teeth fixed. In time. She is ceramic city from one end to the other. No wonder she's got diabetes. Diabetes is a cell membrane disease. Her cell membranes are now all clogged up with aluminum. Hapton. At home. Hapton. Right? I'm going to write her a letter. So, you know, Paula, you could go back to eating all of the butter and heavy cream you want. Not what gave you the diabetes or the sugar. Of that hamburger. She makes a hamburger made with maple syrup, on, fried onion rings on top. Then instead of bread, it's a Krispy Kreme. The look looks like Krispy Kreme donuts from Pennsylvania, and you know, on top of that. I, mean, I think it's got cheddar cheese in it, also. You know. No, I said it's, it's, her heart, her her diabetes has got everything to do with her dentistry. I'll put my 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 life, my money on on that. No, I'm very... That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the first time I heard Hal Huggins say that to me, 20 years ago, he said 90% of all diseases start in the mouth. So I'm sitting in a room with a madman. It's so bizarre. He said it again. 90% of all diseases start in the mouth. You know what, 20 years later? Absolutely right. 50% of all diseases start in the mouth. So show me, the, the sicker my patient is, they're talking to me and giving me their history. The more they talk, the more dentistry I can imagine in their mouth. And sure enough, they open up, and the sicker they are, the more dentistry they have. You'll, and, you, and as you get into this, you'll see that that's absolutely true. That's what happened to Paula Dean. She had her teeth fixed. Who knows if she's got implants, root canals, and who knows what else. Right. No, 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 no. You can eat all you want and whatever you want so long as it's real food. Right. The sugar, white sugar is not a real food. Absolutely not. Yes. Yeah, oh, I think I see. I see where you're coming from now. Uh, I apologize. I stand corrected. 
Oh, she not the donuts, the Krispy Kreme donuts, or anything. That that contributed, right? You're absolutely right. Right. Oh, but if she had eaten real food, food, real butter, real meat, real vegetables, nothing processed, no soda, what a difference our, our world would be. Because that's what Weston Price found. He went to these different countries and saw that the people ate the food that was indigenous to their area were healthy. We're absolutely, fried foods is not ba that bad. It's, it's fried foods that have been fried in the same oil a thousand times at McDonald's. Oh, and, and that's a totally different story, okay? Okay, so 50, National Academy of Science says 15% of the population chemically sensitive. I think that number is a little bit on the low side. It's higher than that. 55,000 chemical compounds produced annually. 50,000 chemicals are added to our food supply. Wow. I was thrilled. I took the kitchen tour yesterday. I was thrilled to find out that they bake everything here. There's no preservatives put in anything. If you have bread at lunch, that bread was baked in the morning. If you have bread at dinner, that, bre that bread was baked in the afternoon. And any, everything has a four-year life expectancy here. So everything is timed. Four hours. Four hours. Yeah. Yeah. And once, once something goes upstairs, it never comes back down into the kitchen area. Four hours, they said it's into a blend and then dumped into the ocean to the fishes and then the fishes and we, they catch the fish and give it back to us. They called it the circle of life. I thought that was cute. I was glad to see that everything is made fresh here on this boat. Um, there's 700 chemicals added to our drinking water. The people who are purifying the water the people who are pissing in the toilets. Yeah. Okay, and then there are 10,000 chemicals used in processing and storage of food. The Twinkies just don't taste the same today as they did when I was a kid. They're just loaded with so many chemicals now. They're just nowhere near as good. Okay, another kind of antigen, Smith. The plasma, the little pocket inside the cell bat, bat, uh, body of a bacteria. Okay, double-stranded DNA, DNA, not in the nucleus. Very interesting. Not in the nucleus of the cell, in the body of the bacteria. Okay, what does the plasma do? It's like a CIA information network for the bacteria. Allows the bacteria to produce the toxins it needs for survival. It allows the bacteria to develop resistance to antibodies. It survive. Okay. It allows them to become resistant to heavy metals. A lot of our medications have heavy metals in them. They become resistant to them. They become resistant to UV light. We have a UV light in our house, our water is filtered through this huge filtration system. Sometimes filtered goes through the UV light, but bacteria that are resistant to that. Okay, here's the important one: the plasmids increase the production of exotoxins. Important. Okay. The toxic proteins are lethal for the bacteria. This is a little war going on, this echo war going on inside your body. They're all trying to vie for first place. Okay? And those toxins that the bacteria produce are coated from the plasmids. Okay? There's some plasmids that are actually good for us. Some of them produce um, toxins that, for instance, eat up oil. This is when they had the spill in the Gulf of Mexico. They put out these bacteria into the water that were capable of eating up the oil. Okay. Plasmids are activated by incredibly small amounts of heavy metals. Here's your take home message. Because if you have mercury in the body, if you have aluminum in the body, a copper in the body from industry, it's going to activate your plasmids. 
That's why, see, people don't get the connection. They say, ah, mercury filling causes arthritis. Mercury filling caused me to have a heart attack. What happens? Okay? When it comes to aluminum, this is the work that Hal Huggins is doing now. He's finding that one part per million, but one part brilliant. Okay, within seven days, binds to the bacteria, forms and activates the plasma. Almost like a, almost at a homeopathic level. Okay. When I, when I first saw that, the work that he was doing and saw that the lower and lower and lower the amount of aluminum in the body, re, the reaction to the aluminum is the same. Very interesting. We're no longer talking Newtonian physics here. Okay? We have to look at this from a quantum physics paradigm. Very small amount changes everything in the body. That is just magic. Okay, I just said that. This is no, this no longer a Newtonian paradigm, quantum physics paradigm. Okay? You have to talk about frequency changes. Toxins are released into the cell and toxins are created by bacteria. Something else totally different going on then training has led us to believe. We were led to believe you have to reach LD50 to have toxicity. No, not true. So, okay. Why is this, well, another example of why it's important, you have things like E. coli. Okay, e. coli have their plasmids turned on heavy metals. Okay. It passed from human hands to vegetables. And on top of that, vegetables are now sprayed fine, fine, fine layer of plastic. All right, have any of you guys look at Mercola's website? Yeah, Mercola finally hit this lab just last week. I went, ah, look at this, they finally got it. Our vegetables are being sprayed with this plastic. If the ha if the vegetables were touched by somebody who had E. coli on their hands and had mercury filling, now those e. coli are producing these toxins. They get onto the vegetable. Normally, that would get washed off, or the aerobic environment would eliminate a problem. No, now they're spraying the vegetables with plastic. They're creating an anaerobic environment. So. Well, I love it. Hey, you've got to keep the lettuce looking like it was picked yesterday. If you take a piece of romaine lettuce and snap the bottom of it, you'll see this fine, fine layer of plastic. It's on organic lettuce, too. It's not just regular lettuce. I noticed it first on apples. I thought it's more than just wax. Okay, titanium. If you look at compatibility testing, Titanium reacts, people are usually okay with titanium. For the most part, people are okay with titanium. It doesn't mean you can put it in the mesodermal space of the body. I'm okay with something on my arm. Foolery over here. That's what this is. Okay, just because I can put this on my arm doesn't mean that I can stick it in my bone marrow. Okay, within 72 hours been shown to have changes in the stain from titanium. It's a little different story inside the body. One found particles of titanium from hip replacements using genetic stability in human fibroblast cells. Okay, and think again about changes in the body. When I'm done with the lecture here, you can take a look. This thing, I, I did this 10 years ago. Um, this is a review of the toxicity of titanium. Never see this anywhere else. Nobody wants to talk about how titanium changes monocytes, cells, and B cells. Why? Because titanium is a great metal. Not inside the mesodermal space of the body. Plants. 
Doc, that's what they call Hal Huggins, is always referred to as Doc. He asked me if I would find for him the most expensive, the best, the most sterile stabber bone I could get him. Because, you know, he doesn't have his license anymore, so oh, you can't get it without a license. Yeah, sure. Just flipping through a bunch of magazines, I found the most expensive, the best, one that quoted itself as sterile stabber bone. Bought a couple of vials, sent it to him, and... Within a couple of weeks, started growing fuzzies. Fuzzies. All kinds of stuff growing. So called sterile environment. Okay? These, these even cadaver bones, again, is thinking quantum physics, is thinking the energy field that the person who died on that bone okay, is the person. You're putting it into your, your own body. You've got, you got to think in terms of some physics. How is that changing the receiver's body? It has to be some. I mean, they say it's completely dried out now. Sorry. Huh. We're all made of, We are atoms. We are atoms. It doesn't matter how much you break down the atoms. My atoms and my electron cloud around my nucleus is very different, Joan, than your electron cloud, your nucleus. And it doesn't matter if we take a piece of my bone, dry it up so that to the naked eye, it looks like it's just dried up. When you when you enter it into your body, those electron clouds are very different than your electron clouds. Your body recognizes it as not self. If it didn't, it would not be functioning. Okay? okay? I have to agree with Jehovah Witnesses when it comes to this. Jehovah Witnesses say no, but nobody's blood. They say the life of the person is in the blood. Life in the person is in every single cell, every atom, every microparticle. They are all so unique. Okay? Got the appetite crystals. They're histocompatibility complex. Just a crystal. It's not an innate object. It came from the person's body. It has an HCG on it. HC, HCC. Okay. Balls. I can't tell you how many times I've opened people up, get their implants out, and sticking out these little silicon balls. They remind me of when my kids were little, we used to take them to Chuck E. Cheese. They would jump into this very smelly place with, with lots of balls, plastic balls. The kids would jump in and kind of move around, and they're they're swimming in the sea of urine-infested balls, probably. <laughs> and uh, they loved it. They loved it. When I open up these patients who have these implants, they've got these silicon balls. Anybody here do implants? Do you guys do implants? What are those? No. Okay. Okay, so how do they transmit frequency through the body? Because every meridian in the body goes through a tooth. Every single meridian. You got silicon balls. How, how does the, the energy go through the that area? To me, it's no wonder that there's so many heart problems with people in the United States. Almost everybody has their wisdom teeth extracted. Okay. Almost everybody, 95% of all the patients who had their wisdom teeth extracted, Walking around with four cavitations, and they have four holes in their head. The the extraction site never heals. What's the cause of that? This give the patients we used to give the patients used to the xylocaine with epinephrine. Epinephrine is a vasoconstrictor. Closes off blood vessels, and the smallest of the blood vessels, which are the capillaries. They close off altogether. Now you've got bone cells that are starving for oxygen. The cell says to the other, Yo, can't breathe. Can't breathe. Joe's dead. Okay? Then the dentist, after the extraction, stuff some cotton in the patient mouth, expects them to grow new bone of dead cells. Cavitations, I, I believe, are caused by dentists. 
Uh, yeah, okay. There's every once in a while. There's the Mike Tyson who gets in the face. You know, for Koo, every time he sends me a a, a surgery report, he says could also be traumatic on this. No, unless the patient lived in Newark, New Jersey, and got hit in the head. I used to see a lot of that when I was in Newark, New Jersey. Not in Scranton, Pennsylvania. I haven't removed a single bullet since I moved to Scranton. Things are different in different worlds. If most of the cavitations are not caused by being punched in the face. Most of the cavitations are caused by dentists who give epinephrine. They ate a lot of dead bone cells. Never go in, never rotor root of the socket. Now the patient's got four cavitations. Is it going to bother them the day after tomorrow? No. It takes a while for that level of anaerobic bacteria to build up. It takes a while for those toxins to be released. So they don't start getting the symptoms 20, 30 years later. Lo and behold, you open up these holes and black goobers, white goobers, and green goobers, and groobers, you name it. You just scoop this gel out. Those goobers, yeah. And these are these people had their infections thirty years ago. Never healed. Never, never healed. Okay. This bone. People say, well, what about autogenous bone? Take bone from the chin, from the ramus, and use that as a as graft material. Who cook if you're a very, very, very fast surgeon? Suppose if you super, 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 super separate the blood with oxygen before you, you know, harvest your bone. So I once asked Jerry Boku, who is the leading bone pathologist in the world, hey, Jerry, a bone cell go without oxygen? What? 34 seconds. Oh, how are you going to get the bone cells from here? There, from here, hey, you got 34 seconds. Get it in there, take it, close it, make sure there's blood circulating to it. Now, you probably do it with Dean's line on Dean's magnets. Yeah, that probably would help. To do it, you know, you have to. You have to think of it from an energetic point of view, not Newtonian physics. Okay. Composites. Okay. More than half of the composites are loaded with aluminum oxide and particles of aluminum. More than half of them. Now, prior to, remember Saturday Night Fever? Staying alive, staying alive, right? Okay, prior to Saturday Night Fever, somebody went into a discotheque and they had a, a porcelain crown in front of their mouth. And if, if they went into a discotheque and they had the black lights showing, the crowns looked black. Looked horrible. So then, you know, Saturday Night Fever, now you got a lot of people think they're very cool. And they're going to go to a lot of discotheques. And so they were bringing it to the attention of the dentist. You've got a problem here. You've got to have these porcelain crowns and porcelain jackets look real. What did they do? They got permission from the FDA to put in radioactive material in the porcelain powder. FDA being the large parted organization that they are, no more than 9.98%. Can you imagine? No more than 10%. See, 9.98% is almost 10%. More than 10% radioactive material and porcelain powders. I'm, I'm one of those people who's very happy to see the new generation of ceramics coming up. Because, yeah, let's get rid of the radioactive porcelain ones. You're walking around with your own little... Uh, a power plant. There are no controls for composites. Composites have 30, 40 percent radioactive material in them. Controls. I don't know how that happens, you know. Is when you're in my presence, please pronounce it correctly. FNDA, okay? Okay. People are constantly exposed to harmful substances that cannot be broken down by the body properly. Uh, pesticides, gasoline, paint, industrial waste, preservatives, dry cleaning chemicals. Now, I can't tell you how many times a patient will come into the office and this one will say, dry cleaning chemicals is what's showing up for you. Oh. Who's 
I always try to clean my clothes. Well, you dry clean your clothes, you're absorbing that stuff in your skin. Okay? done that it takes three days you you live in texas and by three days you could have four snowstorms two rainstorms you know it doesn't it doesn't dry out oh, no, i don't know texas yeah you could do it in texas okay you know you know what the new car smell is how to get the, the leather and the plastic soft in new car smells new car <laughs> You buy that new car, drive it down to Texas, put it in the sun, heat it up, and open all the windows and air it out. Probably a couple of weeks. Drive it. Okay. okay. But we can't control to a certain extent the dental materials we place in our mouths. Thank God. How is you as a dentist like the least reactive material? That's where my lab comes into play, Biocomp Laboratories. Two labs in the country to have to say it. Pronounce that for me. Thank you. There. Now he's the one who says things are suitable or not suitable. Love it. Okay. How is it done? Two vials of blood are drawn from the patient's arm. Two red top tubes. Prefer this to be, it's a Yes, prefer. Patients, a lot of them who have come to Scranton, they had breakfast at 6 in the morning. I'm talking to them at 4 o'clock in the afternoon now. I'll draw blood from them. So at least it's at least 6 hours. Obviously, 12 hours is better. Why? Because you don't want their immunoglobulins in their body to be reacting to the food they ate. You know, they, so, there's so many people out there that are gluten intolerant. They're still eating bread, and they've got this whole system going on in their body. So then that skews the test. You want to know that they're reacting to the dental material, okay? Somebody's going to go and have blood drawn. The first thing you want to do is reassure the patient that they're calm during the procedure. I love that slide because I'm a needle phobic, so I, I can really relate to this. Right? How many how many people does it take to hold Blanche down to get a drop of blood out of her finger? Hey, do you have that picture? Who's got that picture? A lot of pictures out there that that could incriminate me. <laughs> One of them is um, Doc wanted everybody to have. He has a new test. You can look at the chromosome twenty two. See how susceptible you are to developing Alzheimer's. Um, uh, any of the uh, other autoimmune diseases, MS, Lou Gehrig's disease. And he says that there are a significant number of dentists that are missing this chromosome. So, of course, he wanted all of us tested. I thought, if I just go over to the bar and have a couple of martinis, nobody will notice. <laughs> they noticed. They called me over after two martinis. Hey, Blanche, you didn't get your blood drawn. I go, no, 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 it's okay. It's okay. I think it took four people. Four people held me down. One drop of blood. So can't help it. It's just, you can you can do a lot of other things to me, but don't don't touch my fingertips. Okay. The serum is separated from the whole blood and placed in special glass tubes. We provide. We you call the lab. We send you the testing kit. Charge. Okay. Then it's spun down. Okay, and it's this portion, the plasma, where the action is. Okay? The serum is then frozen solid and shipped overnight to Colorado Springs where the lab is. Do not send these out on a Friday. Then they'll land in Colorado Springs on a Saturday in the little metal box that's by our door till Monday morning. We don't do any testing on Monday because we should never get a sample on Monday. Do your testing Monday through Thursday. Okay? This portion of the serum is mixed with the dental component. And right now we're testing 99 components. That means that we're, we don't test for every single dental material. 
because many of the dental materials all have the same components. They're just in different ratios. Okay? So it's like, it's like I like to give the analogy is if you were to walk down the grocery aisle and you have, um, you know, different brands of Duncan Hines cake mix, you have to test 60 different brands? No. What you do is you test for flour, test for non-fat dry milk solids, test for, uh, you know, all the things that, that is in most of the cake mixes. If one of them is pineapple upside down cake, well, this one's got dried pineapples. We have to test for dried pineapples. We have to test for that separately, even though it may not have a lot of it in it. We have to test for it. Any chemicals that the labs, the, the companies that make these tests are in there, we test for them. If you believe the pineapple comes out of the cake once the cake is baked, then you're not going to test for pineapple. Okay? There's another lab that believes, well, the aluminum doesn't come out, therefore we won't test for aluminum. That makes a lot of sense. Okay? If you don't test for aluminum, a lot of dental materials that have aluminum in them will show up as suitable. It's suitable. Now we know this it's not just the amount, because the lower the amount, it's the same reactivity. If it's got aluminum in it, we must test for aluminum. So much black dentists that bark at us, but plants. I want to use Emacs. I want to use this. I want to use that. Okay, so what we did was we created a whole separate category. Okay, do this. We're not looking at the aluminum. Looking at all the other chemicals in the ceramic, these would be the patient's least reactive. That's what we did. We kind of created a whole new category People who do not believe that aluminum comes out, as if it's a religion, <laughs> people do not believe that aluminum comes out, okay? That's what our trays look like. You can see one of those little wells has a dental component, a drop of the person's serum. You get protein precipitation, you get that very, very white little circle. Highly reactive material. We vary this. There's always two, sometimes four controls. You have to do that to be CLIA certified. You have to prove every year doing so many control tests so that your equipment and everything else works as it should. Here is the uh, clinical lab certification federal organization that every, every any lab in the United States has to be CLIA certified. They inspect your laboratory every year. Every year they find absolutely something that needs to be corrected. They always do. They don't feel like they earn their money unless they do that. And after you've made the correction, then they give you certification and you're good for another year. Okay? You can't just open up a lab. You have to be certified. Okay. The results are dependent on the amount of protein precipitation. Mostly react, highly reactive is, is something that is going to be totally opaque. When that, that, those, that tray that has all of these samples shines through a second machine that has a light beam going through it. It's opaque, you're going to have very little light passing through. Then the other side of that machine has a meter that picks up the amount of light that passes through. This is all done by machine. It's not a subjective test for Somebody looks up, oh, yeah, that's a highly reactive at all. It's all done by machine. Numbers are spit out in logarithm form, and then it's transferred from the logarithms to the computer, and the computer tells us uh, what dental materials had those numbers, okay? Moderately reactive is somewhat opaque, and least reactive are the ones that are, that are clear. Okay, so then I have this handout for you also. Okay, look at a hundred patients to see the materials that they were most reactive to. You kind of pull this out of the computer, okay? Approximately 50-50 zirconia. 
zirconia. Not zirconium. Zirconium is the metal. Zirconia is the oxide, the crystalline form. Okay. It's going about 50-50. So even as a dentist that want to do zirconia implants, say 50% of the patients are going to be okay with it. A hundred percent are not okay with mercury, aluminum, and copper. One hundred percent. These are your bullets. What is okay with a bullet? Right? Ninety-nine percent of the patients are not okay with bismuth, lithium. But lithium is used so much in the United States that we tend to think of it as a trace mineral. Even put in doctor's data as a trace mineral. It's not a a heavy metal, and it has no real function in the body. An anti uses as an antidepressant. It has no real function in the body that if it didn't have lithium, you would do just fine. Okay? Lithium, though, once you put it in the body, and it is found in the body, does change the way calcium is metabolized. Okay? Lithium is, is not a great thing. 99% are reactive. That's almost 100% to zinc acetate. Didn't we use a lot of zinc acetate, you know, in the old days? It was a fix it for everything. In the old days, somebody had a cavity. You know, used to, in the old days, used to do uh, three, four patients in a row. You have anesthesia here. You got the next patient. Boom, boom, boom. You did one filling at a time, maybe two. That's the way dentistry was done back then. No, and of course the patient paid five dollars cash. Surface, dentist got cash. No, this was the good old days, not because dentists made a lot of money cash. This was the good old days because I think it kept dentists somewhat honest. Then insurance came into the picture and ruined everything. Because then suddenly, the patient received not what they needed, what insurance paid for. It changed. Dentistry, just like it changed medicine. That what the, what the insurance company pays for, not necessarily the patient needs. So you didn't do anywhere near the number of crowns. I started in dentistry in 1969. You didn't do anywhere near the number of crowns back then that we do today. It just wouldn't wouldn't think of telling somebody you needed a crown. Plus the tooth was completely bombed out, and you really needed a crown. The dentists are telling people. Oh, you have a little crack here. You know, that tooth's going to need a crown. Better crown it now before it breaks. You know, Murphy's Law, it's going to break at the worst opportune time. You know, show me somebody who's over 50 that doesn't have some hairline cracks in their teeth. To me, that's, that's, that, you know, they sent me letters telling me that I'm unethical because I recommend the extraction of root canals. In telling a patient they need a full crown, there's a hairline crack on the buckle of tooth number 19 and the patient is 55 years old, that's unethical. Put that tooth down completely and make a crown, that's unethical. You tell patients. I got a very nice letter from the American Endodontic Society. And uh, I still tell the patients they should have their root canals now. 55% nickel, cadmium, zirconium, zinc, beryllium, gallium, platinum. Quinones, sickest of your sickest patients, are going to be highly reactive to quinones. Boy, if you get one of those, don't send them to me. I've already had my share. And when she came back, highly reactive quinones, that means almost all of the composites have quinones in them. She could not have any composites. She could not have any temporary materials. She couldn't have anything. We made her, I made her probably one of the first snap-on smiles. She was okay with the the pure resin base, so I was able to seal the teeth after I removed the decay and the amalgam and everything else. Teeth couldn't couldn't restore them. Made a snap on smile. War when she stepped out of the house. Okay, that's what the test looks like. New cover. Our new cover now has oxygen preferences. Okay. Um, so if you say these are the materials that. But Blanche, these are the materials I use on a regular basis in my office. I'll send you this cover. You never have to open the book. How easy is that? Immediately tells you if the patient is highly reactive, not to, to the ones that you like. Okay. 
That's our phone number. Any questions? That's what local anesthetics because they're all toxic. That's why they're local anesthetics. They shut down messages from the synapse. That's their purpose. They're good for the body. No, not equally toxic. Hmm. Think about that. No, they're not all equally toxic. I use I use Barbicane. Every once in a while, I'll have a patient that I'm having a difficult time getting anesthetized. Anesthetine. No epinephrine. Now, the only time I'll use epinephrine if the patient's been bleeding for, they're on blood thinners, and, um, and we took them off blood thinners for five days, but they're still bleeding like crazy. Okay, then you've got to inject a little bit of epinephrine, otherwise you go to the hospital with the patient the night in the hospital with them. So that's the only time I use epinephrine. Now, do we do test, but we test with, my husband does the testing using muscle testing. No, there is a difference because he does the muscle testing to find out what's going on. And less toxic, right, right. Also, I find mostly carbocaine is safe for everybody. I use so much of it. Right. Right. But the purpose of anesthetic, now again, most dentists are using a whole carpool, really not necessary. It's sort of a carpool. If the patient's not numb, there's another problem. And most of the time, here's your pearl, most of the time, it's because their blood sugar is low. Most is the carrier of the anesthetic to the cell. If the blood sugar is low, I get numb. I said, no, I set them up and give them some juice, sedated, just give them 10 cc's of 5% glucose. They And they get numb right away. The other thing the juice does, if they're not sedated, the juice shuts off. They're in sympathetic drive. These guys are ready to fight, even though they look calm. Why, by sitting them up and saying, okay, we're not going to do anything now, have some juice, I put them into parasympathetic mode. The body says, oh, appointment's over. I must be eating now. Good. <laughs> now they're in parasympathetic, much calmer. They do get numb. It's amazing. A little bit, you know, we, we carry those little juice bottles with us. So the organic apple juice. We say, okay, have a little bit of juice, relax. Yeah, you're numb now? Oh, yes. And that's only a third of a carpule. Okay. Yeah, very little. A little anesthesia. And, of course, we I have, because I went to Capital University, do auricular acupuncture also. Oh, I'll put a needle in 10 men, either side. Um, set the lights, let them sit for 20 minutes. We've got profound anesthesia. Okay. So we have all kinds of tricks. A lot of times my husband will come in and check them, and out they're neurologically switched, blocked. A lot of people use that word switching and blocking interchangeably. Neurologically switched, every message that's coming out of their brain is being perceived as the exact opposite, the end organ. So he has to unswitch them for me before I could do any work. So, you know, I'll yell, time, <laughs> go in the back, have tea, and John works with the patient for half an hour. Which is in my office not a big deal because I only have one patient a day. The afternoon, late afternoons, I do my new patient exams. In the day we're doing revisions, one usually one a day. Okay, I have a dream practice. I have the dream practice. Practice that way for 20 years. I say the word insurance and I get a twitch. All right. Get treated the next morning, right? And those patients have a whole system. Those patients, if they're coming from from Japan, if they're coming from Italy, if they're coming from California, they have to send me a complete set of X-rays, not a panoramic and four bite wings. Very good. In the wool set of X-rays. Those cavitation area. I have to see the wisdom teeth sites really well. It's that very fine difference in trabeculation patterns tells you where you have a cavitation. If you, if you, if you, if you ain't been trained to see it, 
you're not going to see it. If somebody shows you how to see it, you'll be able to see it. You've got to have a very good set of x-rays. A piece of paper you can't hold up to the light just doesn't do it. They send me a full set of x-rays ahead of time. We actually begin our new patient consultation on the telephone. They pay for the new patient exam. We start it ahead of time. We do, I do the consultation. I talk with them on the phone for an hour. I'm looking at their x-rays. I give them a guesstimate of how much it's going to be. They don't want to travel that distance, especially the ones from other countries. They have to bring the money with them. They, this way, we've had that conversation. Then they make their new patient appointments, say, 4 o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon. It's scheduled Wednesday to do the work. Works out very nicely. If the patients who need dentures, you have to have impressions taken someplace else. Send me the models also, or they have to plan on spending a week to two weeks in Spanton. They do that. Then we take impressions. We have the dentures made. Everything is in all, all there at one time. Okay. Here or so. Sometimes you have to use a little bit of pink in the front, but mostly clear. I'm done. Thank you.